We will now move to the video which has been sent through by uh, Charles Dorsey, uh, who's the Director of Strategic Initiatives at Consensus Hong Kong. He is the Asian Managing Director of Consensus, a leading blockchain engineering company. Among his many responsibilities, he leads its projects on central bank digital currency with Hong Kong Monetary Authority and the Bank of Thailand. Prior to this, Charles served as head of fintech with the Hong Kong government, uh, Invest Hong Kong, and uh, in that capacity, helped found and scale Hong Kong Fintech Week. In 2021, he published Block Kong, a book about blockchain leaders shaping the Hong Kong blockchain e ecosystem. And um, he's obviously an extremely uh, eminent um, a worker in this area, and um, we look forward to listening to his video now. A very good morning from Hong Kong. Thank you so much for having me uh, this afternoon in Australia. Uh, my name is Charles Diossi. I'm the director for Asia Pacific uh, at Consensus. And what I'd like to highlight to you today is uh, our views and experience on CBDCs and uh, the upcoming uh, decentralized finance. Uh, 2021 is obviously a year of change. Uh, a lot of momentum is happening in this uh, in this market, and Australia is at the forefront of this uh, of this evolution. And uh, I will uh, I will present to you during uh, during these next minutes uh, how we see things moving on our side. So Consensus is uh, one of the world's largest blockchain engineering company. Uh, we focus on protocol uh, infrastructure as well as application layer. So we really cover the full stack. Um, and uh, today we've got more than a million. Um, users of our wallets. Uh, we help uh, more than 80,000 80, developers and applications to run on Ethereum uh, and our software suite uh, is very much in, uh, in traction. We were founded in 2015 by Joseph Lubin, uh, the Ethereum uh, founder. The company is busy with protocol, developer tools, DeFi enablement uh, and payment, as well as asset management and capital market activities. Uh, we acquired a few months ago um, uh, JP Morgan Corum, which is essentially is the operating system uh, for this uh, leading bank uh, for all their blockchain activities, and we keep developing the software. Uh, Sansis has been very much involved in, uh, in CBDCs uh, over the past years. I started for us in 2018 uh, with uh, engagement with the MAS in Singapore, as well as the South African Reserve Bank. Uh, today, we are uh, very actively building a cross-border CBDC uh, platform uh, together with the HKMA and the Bank of Thailand. For the Thai market specifically, uh, we also uh, delivered a few weeks ago um, uh, a research uh, and, uh, and, and POC on uh, domestic retail CBDC. Uh, we are also working with Société Générale, with Banque de France, and of course with the Reserve Bank of Australia. Uh, so with the stack, with the experience, uh, it has been a really a, a, a fantastic journey, and we feel very privileged to have been able to, 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 to join uh, a third journey. So when you look at uh, CBDCs, uh, as it was described before, there is really three main type of CBDCs, the wholesale ones, uh, which are essentially connecting uh, the central banks with, uh, with the banks uh, of the, their ecosystem. There is also cross-border CBDCs, where you look at uh, cross-border transfers, using this, uh, this, uh, this blockchain-based currencies, as well as the retail CBDCs. Uh, we are working out of a, a CBDC technology sandbox, uh, which allows essentially central banks and banks to start to put their hands on the process, to start to uh, give feedback, uh, experience, and build, most importantly, the use cases. I think one of the challenges for CBDCs is not only to deliver uh, a blockchain-based currency, but looking at what the technology can bring and what the technology uh, can, can essentially create in terms of value for, for the banks. So the use cases uh, uh, which will trigger a migration to this new type of infrastructure are extremely important. Uh, from experience, uh, they have to be developed uh, end in ends between the, the banks, the commercial, the commercial banks, the central bank, but also the technologists, uh, such as consensus, to really understand what the technology can bring and not trying to replicate only uh, what, uh, what uh, traditional currencies can do. Uh, interoperability uh, is also uh, a topic of, uh, of attention. 
uh, there is multiple uh, initiative in multiple parts of the world uh, and probably in the in the coming months and years uh, this uh, connectivity uh, of, of different platforms uh, and, and networks will be uh, will be really uh, paramount for, for the success uh, and the adoption of these CBDCs. Uh, keeping the banks involved in the CBDC architecture is also something we learn over our, uh, our, our experiences so far with, uh, with central banks. Uh, as soon as the banks are there, there is some engagement, there is some really high quality feedback. It's important to not deliver an infrastructure only, but uh, co-design, co-build an infrastructure uh, to, to really get uh, the adoption uh, from the early days from the, the banking sector. Uh, we, also, we are also noticing that there is a, a growing appetite from central banks into understanding the main net of Ethereum, uh, which is essentially a global uh, network, uh, decentralized network. Uh, and what it brings is really the reach. Uh, reach for uh, commercial counterparts, reach for uh, other subsidiaries of, uh, of, uh, of the domestic companies or domestic banks. Uh, and this mainnet access is, uh, is progressing very well. Uh, the same way you can us usually use cash today, uh, there is also a lot of opportunities for everyone to be, uh, to be uh, adding connectivity and, and far-reaching connectivity via a global network. Privacy of the transactions and compliance are important. Uh, as well as the open source uh, development. Uh, open source is a very complicated topic. Um, central banks in general don't want to be uh, locked with a vendor. Uh, open source is one option to, uh, to, get, uh, to get more freedom, but it also takes some efforts, uh, which the open source community is not always uh, able to deliver to maintain quality software. Uh, we feel there is also uh, quite some peer pressure in this topic. Uh, it's a very hard topic, CBDC. So some central banks and banks are running into this topic with a, with a, a little bit of a, a catch-up uh, behavior. And that's important to, uh, to really look and, uh, and adjust and, and design a strategy. Uh, take the time to, to, uh, to, to communicate with the ecosystem and the, and the technologies to, to really have something meaningful rather than uh, ticking a box, I would say. And lastly, especially when it comes to uh, the, the, the domestic and, and cross-border use cases, the governance of such infrastructure uh, is also important. It's not easy to build a shared infrastructure, it should be between banks or banks and central banks. Um, and, and we feel there is a lot of progress being made, but there is also a lot of, uh, is potentially a, a friction point in, a, in the development of, uh, of CBDCs. The technology is being validated, uh, it's definitely there, uh, but the implementation involves some governance uh, conversations, which can be uh, complicated and, uh, and, and sometimes where, where the help of, uh, of professionals and, and, and consultants in defining this governance is very, very critical for the success of the platform. I'll go very quickly to speak to you about decentralized finance or DeFi. Uh, and essentially what we start seeing in, the, in our ecosystem and, and the CBDCs will at some point grab some of these uh, components or grab some of these new uh, type of infrastructure uh, is the raise of, uh, of decentralized finance. So if you look at the stack of finance today from the money emission to commercial banking, exchange, work credit, insurance and payment, we have some existing players in the centralized finance world. And what we see in decentralized finance uh, is extremely experimental, uh, is definitely not ready uh, yet for uh, mainstream adoption, but there is some very interesting technologies as well as very interesting um, model of operations which are being developed and uh, we can tell you first then that uh, commercial banks and central banks are, are looking, studying, researching this ecosystem to understand what can be, uh, what can be uh, interesting to uh, eventually port into, uh, into the, the modern finance infrastructure. So you will find in the world of payment uh, some, uh, some equivalent in, a, in, a, in blockchain based assets. Um, same here for the core banking activities with Maker. Uh, same for the lending and underwriting with uh, uh, gigantic uh, and global companies. I think today to uh, to consider also the, the rise of, uh, of new type of, of blockchain based infrastructure. Same for the wealth management uh, as well as uh, the exchanges. So a lot of things are happening in the space. Uh, the, the space is definitely, I would say, uh, supported by uh, the engineers, in, uh, should they be technologists or, or financial engineers, but also the regulators adopting the, the technology with different uh, purposes, 
but all of this will uh, will definitely emerge. Thank you so much for having me again, and uh, I look forward to the rest of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much for your very uh, interesting presentation, and you're in the thick of all of this in terms of a com in a commercial sense.